Hey guys, welcome back. Alright, so if you're kind of new to my channel, um, most people know that I'm a part-time knife maker. I love doing this stuff. I have a very small shop. You can look back in the videos uh, if you're interested on how to become a knife maker, how to build knives, etc. A lot of the times what I do is I will um, buy a large steel sheet. I will come up with some type of design and get all my knives water jetted in one shot. Then I will take all those knives, stamp them, and etch them. I don't know if you can see that. My last name is in there. And if I can, I usually try to put the uh, type of steel it is. This happens to be D2. My knives happen to be a little bit on the thicker side. I tend to go with the 3 16 or obviously the uh, quarter inch stock. Um, that's just the way I do it. There's plenty of reasons to go with a thinner stock. Believe me, I know. Uh, some of the stuff that I do make happens to be just regular bar stock. Uh, this one right here is the last ditch knife. This is just regular 5160 bar stock that I cut out all by hand. And you can absolutely do that and then send your stuff off to the heat treat or heat treat it yourself. Um, what I find works for me might not work for everybody. So I just wanted to let you guys know there's many options out there. You could look back into the archives of all my videos and take what you can throw out what you don't like that kind of thing Now, during the process of this video is going to be a lot of noise so if I'm talking very loudly it's because um, I have a air compressor and fans and exhaust fans and all that other stuff that's going to be going on I should say if you want to kind of do this for a business please check the uh, archives uh, for my video uh, and I explain in full detail what it takes to become uh, a knife maker and um, it can be quite a bit of an expense so before you get into it as a business please make sure you review those videos if you want to do it like a one of or a two of and just have a good time then I highly recommend that it's awesome so what I'm going to do today is I am going to uh, make the Huntsman this happens to be one of my designs Huntsman knife, hunting season's coming up. I know it's summer's here, but by the time I get through to it uh, and get all my knives ready for sale for the hunting season, I usually wind up only holding on to one or two of my knives just for hunting season because they sell it very quickly. If you're looking for the, uh, uh, all the knives that I have are available on the website, please go to threeriverblade.com. Check out all the stuff I have up there. I have stuff for every single size. Everything from like a 17 inch chopper all the way down to like a nice uh, belt knife. All right. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to build this knife. This is D2 steel, quarter of an inch thick. It has a nice four, four and a half inch blade. I will be hollow grinding it. And it has a five inch handle. It does have a little bit of jimping on top. And quarter inch holes. All right. One has a lanyard loop in the back. I like to make simplistic designs for myself. It's easier to do uh, if you have a home shop. So if you have a garage or, or whatever, it's easier to do than the uh, more intricate type of style, especially if you not you don't have any you know fancy machining. So if you have any questions, try to put them down below during the uh, scope of this video. I'll try to get as much done as I can on this one, and then part two, part three, whatever. We'll see what goes from there. I should say that I always emphasize hearing protection, some type of breathing mask, and eye protection. You can use gloves if you want to. Some people do, some people don't. Uh, I find that um, for me, I don't always, unless it's a really big, large piece, that I, it's a little bit clunky. Uh, if you are someone that is delicate, this is probably not the uh, job for you. Because you will wind up with really nasty cuts and scars on your hands. That is just, <clears throat> that's just part of it. So, I'm going to bring you over to the grinder. I'll show you a little bit. We'll talk about it. and then we'll. Alright guys, so before I turn on the fans and everything else, this is my 10 inch wheel. It is serrated. This whole machine here is a KSG. I've been using it for years. It is an outstanding product. And uh, the motor I've never had to replace. You will have to replace the wheels eventually because they will get run down, especially if you're using plastic or polymer wheels as opposed to the aluminum. Uh, but this right here is a 10 inch wheel. It's excellent. So what I'm going to do is, normally uh, on a knife like this, what I want to do is start with the grinding on the bevel, make sure that the uh, hollow grind is where I need it to be. 
and I don't want to start up here I want to start at the very very edge okay so when you start at the very edge what will happen is if you are using like a 36 grit felt like this is all the little grits and everything are going to start smacking you in the face and beating you up a little bit and you kind of don't really want that so what I tend to do is use a used belt and um, use a 60 60 grit used belt something with a little bit finer grain structure that's not going to be popping off because you actually spend a lot of money on materials and I know I've said this in the past but you don't make a lot of money you don't get rich becoming a knife maker that's that's a hundred percent truth now there are the exceptions like the Ken onions and everybody else but I guarantee Ken onion only grinds his own steel when he needs to not or when he wants to I should say all right please excuse the noise I'm in my garage so he only grinds the steel when he wants to all right he's not grinding it uh, because he has to anymore he's past that he's more of a knife designer and he has people doing that work for him God bless him that's a great kick so what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to put the um, the initial start. It doesn't matter how you do it. You could use a jig. A lot of guys like to use jigs. I do not. I freehand all my stuff. Which, if you are not practiced, when you do freehand stuff, what happens is uh, you tend to have a little bit more grind on this side or a little bit more grind on this side, and it, it kind of looks weird. So pleasing aesthetically and good enough to your eyes will make you a good knife okay uh, any piece of steel can cut I can get a piece of lawnmower blade and sharpen it up to cut but if you want to make a nice looking knife and you want to uh, sell the knives you obviously got to do a little bit more in that all right so used uh, use 60 grit belts I'm just gonna take the edge off and guys a little bit of instruction as I'm still grinding okay so you're gonna have to decide if what kind of ricasso you want or if you want one at all this one does not have a ricasso if you don't know what a crosso is it's usually a piece of steel between the blade and the handle itself uh, I've been lately not using them at all I think I want to use as much as the blade as possible the only thing is if you are going to use this knife it's going to be primarily a slicer if you are going to use it in a stabbing motion you probably want some type of protection from the blade so there you might leave a little bit more steel now if you can look over here let's see if I can get some more light alright so this is not exactly even okay you see on this side the plunge lines are a little bit off I don't know if you could see that which I'm going to fix alright it's going to be a little hard to show it on the um, on the video, but 
these plunge lines will be fixed before this knife is done and I'm going to show you how to do that. Also as you're grinding, this happens to be a hollow grind, you'll notice that uh, what a lot of guys do when they're new is they'll start grinding here and then start beveling out the edge and what happens is this becomes super skinny and then the edge becomes fat and it's not even. So what I would tend to do is to tell guys to grind over here or grind from the front to the back instead of the back to the front. Okay, that normally helps that out. What you don't want is like the two inch burn where a lot of guys say to get it like a two inch burn here and that's from the two inch belt and then this is all messed up. The other thing you want to look at is the tip. Okay, you can see right here it's a little bit off. Um, that's from grinding on one side or the other. Like I said, I do not use um, jigs. I think jigs kind of getting away from me. Some people are excellent at it. Uh, also, I don't use any marking dies. I've tried marking dies before uh, where what you would do is, you know, before you start grinding the steel, you could put marking dies and scratch where you want the blade to end and start. Again, this is all personal preference. There's many, many knife makers out there that do that every day. But for me, I do a lot of my stuff by eye and I'm comfortable with it. Also, if you are going to do a hollow grind, make sure that you are aware that uh, where you're holding your wheel edge to the steel itself. Okay, If you are not pressing or you're a little bit too high on the wheel on one side and then you are too low on the wheel on the other side, it's going to mess up your lines. It's also not going to grind the way you want it to. Now for me, I do not like to have a hollow grind all the way out to the tip. What I usually do is I start here, make it really nice and hollow and especially around the cutting edge and then I want a flatter edge because I think that um, when you get to the point I don't want a concave edge on both sides. I think it kind of looks a little bit tacky for me. For me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this is all hollow up to here and then kind of give it like a saber-ish point tip. It leaves a little bit more meat there and it makes it a little bit stronger. Also, make sure you change your belts. I happen to like the um, orange blaze belts. I don't have any more in stock. I'm using something else right now, which is not really all that great, but you will run through a lot of belts, especially if you're working on a quarter of an inch piece of steel. Somebody also asked me um, why, why do I do the heat treat first? Honestly, because I have ground blades before and sent them off to the heat treaters and they come up all bent up and that whole freaking mess is just useless. I can't use it. They're not going to pay me for the steel. They're not going to do anything for me. Um, you know, they'll probably throw me uh, a discount on my next heat, be heat treat batch. But if I send it off stock without any grinding, I know that these blades are not going to warp. And then, yeah, it's a little bit tougher. It's a little bit harder to grind, 100%, and you'll go through a lot more belts, but the piece won't be junked right when you get it back from the heat treater. All right, so, you know, it, that's one of those tricks you got to learn. So, uh, lastly, what I will say is make sure you change your belts often. As you can see, when it starts to get like a little bit of a shine or a sheen, that means all you're doing is polishing your metal. You're not taking it off anymore. All right, so you gotta you got to put the investment into the belts. I know it's a lot put the investment into the belts. It also will um, relieve you of a lot of arm, neck, and hand strain because you're constantly pushing your blade into a uh, surface that is no longer sharp or grinding, doing what it's supposed to do. You're just polishing the edge, which is not really going to help you at all. And that's when you start slipping. And if you press too hard, you might slip and hurt yourself. So change them. All right. I'm already at uh, four belts already. Uh, on 36 grit for this and I'm not even done. So if you got to change them, change them.
right guys so what we got here is a flex belt all right you can buy these flex belts anywhere and um, I already went ahead and tried to smooth out the edge it's probably about an 80 grit J flex belt and the idea behind this is to try to get your plunge lines as straight or as clear as possible all right so this one's a little bit off it's a little bit jacked up not a problem I'm going to fix it but what you really want is this nice sheen round edge from you have the hollow grind you have the flat and then you have this nice little shoulder I've seen a lot of knives where it's just straight or it's jacked up or it's jagged jagged and it looks terrible alright so 80 grit um, J, J flex belts you can buy them anywhere and then what you want to do is make sure that the lines on this side match the lines on this side again and constantly watch the edge make sure the edge of the knife is symmetrical you want the lines of the grind on both sides to look symmetrical and this is the part that kills everybody it's really really hard to do especially if you're going to do it by hand a lot of people use CNC machines now they barely even do this type of work all right but if you are a garage knife maker and eh, you're gonna have to learn how to do this if you want to have good looking blades now, I started with a 36, I went to 60, and now I'm at 80, okay? And now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the flats, or what they call a, um, uh, flat, not a flat grind, a, um, what I'm going to do now is a surface grind. As you can see here, I left all the, um, the heat treat marks or the sledge or whatever it else was on there okay I left that there so I could see my grind lines a lot of people will uh, pre-grind or after there's some services where they'll just you know grind it out for you to begin with and sometimes it's better to do it that way and then put the bluing on and then grind but ultimately if there's a quarter inch thick piece of steel I have to make sure that the flats are, are, are straight and the way you do that is if you look if you look down the blade itself and if you don't see any type of warpage I'm pretty sure it's a good blade now when you start doing the grind you're gonna see that this grind right here this grind line is gonna start to lower because you're lowering the surface on each side okay so that that grind will get a little bit smaller but you don't want to make it too small to lose the punch marks all right the uh, I punch my name in here so you know I just want to make it clean and I want to kind of fix up this little ricasso area or the um, plunge lines on this side okay so that's going to take a little bit of doing and the way I do that because I do not have a surface grinder is I have this machine right here uh, this is a double set it's made by jet I have a 12 inch disc on this side and I have like a nice flat over there I think that's two by six inches so it's two feet by six inches or 24 by six and you can get those as well this machine is about a thousand dollar machine so it's not cheap but it's the best way I know how to do a surface grind without actually getting like a an old school or, or a, you know one of the um, the bricks I'm sorry the uh, grinding wheel types all right this actually works pretty good for me so
fair and honest here. Um, the blades that I make are not 100% symmetrical in every sense of the word. They are excellent, they are outstanding blades, and they are pretty. However, um, when you are working with your hands, it's not going to be the same as working with computers. Uh, CNC machines and knife manufacturers all over the world, they actually cut their bevels in with uh, either lasers or water jets, and they just have somebody sharpen the edges. When you're working with steel by yourself, um, there's going to be a lot of refining and a lot of touching. So what I normally wind up doing is trying to get the plunge lines as close to as clean and as symmetrical as possible, as I said before. And of course, make sure that your tip is as symmetrical as possible. Make sure that the same size or the same grind on each side looks as symmetrical as possible all right now how do i do that is basically going back and forth from the grinding wheel to my flat surface grinder okay just back and forth back and forth until i reach something that is acceptable in my line uh, or in my eyes okay you have to be careful with that because usually what winds up happening is you get tired you've been working all day you've been grinding the hell out of everything and you wind up grinding your knife into a toothpick so all the time and effort and everything turned into crap so what I like to say is uh, when I make a knife it's about a thousand mistakes until it comes out to something useful okay that's kinda how I do my knife making uh, like I said there's, there's other ways you can do it you can use jigs you can use uh, scratch more um, dicum blue and all that other stuff to be a little bit more um, accurate but it kind of takes, for me anyway, it takes the fun out of just going at it. That's kind of how I do it, straight on. So what I'm going to do now is, when I have it in this type of configuration, I'm done with my plunge lines, I'm done with the uh, the grind and all the things that I want to do, I'm done with the flats. What I have to do now is sharpen the edge. Now a lot of people don't sharpen the edge until the end, but I found in... Uh, from experience that at this point it's good to put at least its first edge you don't have to put the actual sharp edge you could just put a uh, nice V grind on there because what happens is if you mess this up and I always like to leave myself a little bit of room for messing things up because it happens all the time if you mess it up you might have to re grind or reprofile the um, the hollow and with the handle on there, you already have a finished product, and you might actually hit the uh, the handle and mess it all up. And then again, it's just scrap. So I put the initial edge on here, and then what I'll do is I'll just buff it out real quick. And then on the handle itself, what I like to do is I like to dig out uh, a good portion of this. As you can see, this is a very, very thick piece of steel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use just my rig top of my grinder and I'll cut all this meat out right here and make like a nice pocket. And I find that when I make a pocket and I make this uh, a nice rough surface, probably with like 30, 36 or, or 26, I'm sorry, or 60 grit, the glue adheres better to it. Okay, so that's why I do that. You'll see that on a lot of my videos. You see me grinding the handle. Um, I know a lot of guys, uh, they like to grind this whole part to make it lighter and then make it a balanced knife. Here's the thing with that. Um, for me personally, I don't throw my knives. I don't care where the balance is. You have a four inch blade and a five inch handle. It's already off balance. So this is gonna be a handle hev heavy knife, which to me, it doesn't really bother me because it's a hunting knife, all right? You can use it for skinning, you can use it for bushcraft, you can use it for whatever you want. And the reason I went with such a large blade, a uh, large handle, is because if you're in the winter and you have gloves on, you have a nice gripping surface. That's why this thing is primarily made for the outdoors. It's not a, a military dagger or anything like that. It's, it's an outdoor knife. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the edge on. You'll see me buff it out, grind this out, and then get ready for that.
Now that everything is done that I wanted to get done for today, all right, I want to tell you that it took me about five hours, five, six hours today to get this knife to the way it looks. Depending on your equipment, depending on the way you work, and uh, if you stop for lunch and all that other stuff, um, you can get to that point as well. Now, this is just one knife. It's a quarter of an inch thick, so obviously it's going to take a little bit more work than a thinner blade. But some of the things I want to let you know now is that, all right, so I've gotten it to this point. Um, next is going to be handle selection. Handle selection I'll do in the second video. It is a good place to stop. What I usually do with this now is I soak it in WD-40 overnight. I'll just spray it down really, really nice and just soak it. Because what happens is um, you're, the, the blade itself is heat treated. Uh, we put a, a tremendous amount of stress on it by using different grinders, different heats, uh, you know, sometimes if you see I'm constantly dunking my blade into water to try to cool it down and to keep it cool. Uh, I got all the lines the way I want it to, to look so I can go forward onto the next step. I've also hollowed out my, my handle a little bit. And if you rush the process of knife making, you will most likely mess it up. Um, I have learned that from experience. There's no such thing as rushing knife making. It's just a dangerous way to work and um, ultimately your piece will come out like crap. So there's no, no reason to rush. If you are having difficulty on certain areas, take a break. Go outside. If you smoke, take a smoke, drink a cup of coffee. Come tackle it from a different, uh, from a different angle. A lot of the things that I do, I can't really explain on video because it's difficult to do so, but when I'm grinding, sometimes I'll grind or I'll move the blade a certain way to make sure I get into this corner. As you see here, I don't like to have a square corner when it comes to the plunge. I like to have a nice round corner, and not all my corners come out the best. Um, when it comes to jimping and all the other stuff, you know, there's, there's millions of ways of doing that. But the way I like to do it is, um, like I said, I take my blades, I draw up a design, I'm sorry, I draw up a design first, I buy a sheet piece of steel, and I get all my blanks water jetted. So if you want to look uh, for reference, this is kind of what it looks like. All right, so this is the before model, and this is the after model, okay? A lot of material has been removed to make that happen. So... If you guys are interested in a blade like this, please go up to 3riverblades.com. Uh, thank you very much for all the support. Uh, please check out all the stuff I got up there and stay tuned for part two, which is going to be the handle. And then once that's finished, we'll probably do the sheath. I know there's a lot of guys that have uh, questions about the sheath. So please go to 3riverblades.com. Thank you.